Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and I've been getting a lot of questions on annual service for the Tesla Model 3. Now there's a lot of questions around what goes into the actual servicing of an electric vehicle that's only a year old, but there are quite a lot of things that are simple, but necessary to keep your Tesla happy and healthy, according to Tesla. Now today I'm headed to the Electrified Garage, and our factory trained Tesla service technician Chad is going to go over this Model 3 from start to finish with all the things required after one year to keep your Tesla happy and healthy. In a different episode, we're gonna go over things at the two and three year mark for the things that your Tesla Model 3 needs after that time passes. We'll be covering services that range in difficulty from easy to a little more challenging, depending on what kind of equipment you have. Now, a lot of these things you can do yourself, but you can also come to the Electrified Garage. Give us a call and set up a service appointment today. Links to the products we use are in the description box below. Now, the alignment is one of those most important things of the annual inspection, seeing as uneven tire wear affects range in a big way. So make sure you make this at the top of your list. Now many of you are asking, Rich, how come you don't work on cars at the garage? Well, that's easy. I'm not a factory trained service technician, and at the garage we want to provide the highest level of service, so Chris and Chad are the factory trained Tesla service technicians, and I'm, well, the guy that shows up and demands they work on my Hummer before I go to the gym. Speaking of the gym, when I go there, all I see are Q-tips. Everyone's wearing Q-tips, an obscene amount of people in the world that have these Q-tips in their ear, broken halfway, as wearable fashion. So, this is a PSA. Stop. Q-tips are meant to be discarded, not left hanging, that's not hygienic, and alas, I too wear things in my ears, but not as nearly the same color of white bread. So, Uncle Rich likes his headphones to not stick out and did some research to learn of Raycons, and I'm pretty pumped with the results. First, being someone that builds things because... A, it's fun, and B, it costs less. I noticed these were in a price point that doesn't make my eyebrows lift too high, being half off the other premium brands, especially for wireless. I ordered some E25s because, well, Snoop Dogg had them, and I was impressed by the wishcraft of pairing the phone right out of the box. They sound like the other top audio brands and don't look nearly as bad as a Q-tip, and it feels right at home in my ear. They have six hours play time, which is exactly how much time I need to keep my attention for a project for an entire week. Their latest model, the E25, is their best one yet with seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit and also comes in new fun colorways. Shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this video and helping me and Snoop Dogg stop people from wearing Q-tips. Click the description below to get 15% off your order. Now, thank you for listening to that extremely important Q-tip public service announcement. Now, I have one more thing for my Tesla fans out there. The Climate Exchange is running a raffle that's letting the grand prize winner literally pick their dream Tesla in the design studio. Literally. Buy a ticket and save yourself the 76,000 real man hours it took me to build Dolores and win the best car out there and stop smelling like gas. Your taxes are paid for. Yes, you heard that right. Even if you play second, you'll get 10 grand and third gives you 5K. Take action. Make a difference. Support the Climate Exchange Raffle. Now let's hear what Chad has to say. All right, Chad, what are we doing today with this Model 3 that's in here? So today it's uh, an annual service. The car's got 16,000 miles on it. We're going to go through it. You know, check the tires for wear, it needs an alignment, check the brakes, pad thickness, take the pads apart, clean them, lube them. We're gonna get them ready for winter. They don't want them to get sticking issues like they had a lot of problems with that with the Model S. Okay. Go through cabin filter, wiper blades, cleaning leaf litter that usually gets stuck in the, the air boxes because that's a big problem. How about the, uh, isn't there an under tray in the rear? The little rocks and stuff gets yep. built up into yep. it. You can do that as well? Mm -hmm. All right. And, and pull, it, pull it down, take a quick peek, make sure it's not hanging down. Uh, make sure all the hardware is uh, in that in that pan because sometimes that they do rattle loose. Okay. Make sure there's no damage, stuff like that. Let's get it ready. All right, cool. Let's do it. Chad, what tool are you using? I believe that's a Milwaukee. Nice. <laughs> what a great company they are. All right, so what, what's wrong with the tire? So these tires, they look pretty good. Yep. Um, however, on the front, the inside edge is getting feathered. Okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you can probably see it at an angle. So they're actually lifted up this way. Yep. Uh, that indicates a toe issue. Okay. And what it means is that instead of going straight down the road, the tire is slightly out. So it's kind of a, a scuffing the inside edge. The wear, I mean, crosswise is pretty good. Uh, it's a little bit on this edge too, but that's from hard cornering. This one is definitely a toe, toe issue. So we're going to have to do an alignment on this car. I want alignments needed. Okay, but this little looks pretty clean. It's only 16,000 miles. Yeah. And I think uh, this is the first annual service this car's ever had. Nice, like a strong man, Chad. This is actually really smooth. Okay. So there's no real alignment issue on, on the rear, so it's just the front. Okay. That's really out of whack. Uh, we're going to rotate these tires anyways. So we'll rotate them 
do the alignment, and okay. then once you do the alignment, um, that should fix any future wear issues. And because we moved the tire from front to back, mm -hmm. they'll wear evenly again. All right. It's so much easier working on a clean car, isn't it? Oh yes. my gosh, no rust, nothing. It's amazing, Great. isn't it? Right. What happens when you don't have them in the floods? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah, so the same thing with this one. This one's fairly smooth, clean. There's no, no feathering. Okay. How's this one? Any feathering? Feathered. Is it? Yep. Gotcha. Okay. This one's not as bad as the other side, but it is feathered. All right. So, most likely the toe is up quite a bit. And you're going to check toe today? Yep. All right. We're going to put it on the alignment machine, check front and rear, okay. and adjust as needed. Cool. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is uh, measure the brake pad thickness, and then pull them all apart, clean them, lube them, and back together. And that's pretty. That's something that has to you have to do pretty commonly in the Northeast because things just go to crap because all the salt, right? Correct. It's, okay. Yeah, it's a real common problem because of you know you have an aluminum caliper with a steel pad. Yep. And then you get salt water mixed into it. Things tend to corrode a little bit. Okay. Makes sense. Um, it's not. It's not like crucial down south or out west where you don't have a lot of room salt and debris and stuff like that. You know, California. Everything's great in California. Right. I mean, uh, the cars were designed and built there, so exactly. yeah, it kind of makes sense. Exactly. Uh, here in New England, uh, with harsh weathers and you know other areas like Michigan and stuff like that, where there's a lot of salt and sea air and and, and lake lake effect and all that stuff, you, things tend to rust more. So you want to protect that. You know, it's it's good practice. I've seen some pads where like these are nice and evenly on both sides. This is a fixed caliper. This does not move. Yep. So the pads have to slide. Well, I've seen where the pads stick on the inside. Usually it's the inside because that's where most of the salt and debris actually really sticks and it doesn't get washed off in puddles. The, the inside pad will look almost new mm -hmm. and then the outside is completely worn. So it's, all it's doing is pushing the one pad in and out and it, that affects your braking power. Uh, you'll notice a huge difference. Like if you had stuck pads and then you do that, you'll notice your brakes are much more sensitive, more responsive, uh, a lot more breaking power out of it. Whereas, gotcha. you know, you don't do that. You're, you're standing in your brake pedal and you're like, well, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, I'm not going right. anywhere. That's, it's still, still going. Yeah, stopping's important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a little mileage. It's already corroding the pin. Okay. But these have like a, a detent. Yep. And that little pin right there locks in the middle of the detent. So this thing only has 16,000 miles. You have to whack a little bit yeah, on it. Yeah, so that's that's the beginning of it. Okay. So that's the thing. This That's why this is important because if they waited to 40,000 or 50,000 miles, right. this would be a lot more difficult, so that one especially slides, in the Northeast. So much easier. That one slides out. Yeah. There's but no it, I mean, it's still, there's still corrosion on it, but it's still, it's not as bad as it could be. So this just slides right out. Yep. I've had uh, to take the rotors off and actually use pry bars and hammers to pull these things out of calipers before. Really? Yeah. It's usually these contact points right here in the metal. Okay. So this one's, like I said, it's new. It's just starting, so you can actually see the bubbling of the corrosion. So when I go to take the wire brush to that, the yep. paint's going to flake off and you're going to see rust on it. Uh, same thing. So this, this one's already corroding. But it's it's normal. It's normal. It's not like it's oh my god, something's wrong with the car. It's just right. it's not like stop the world. I want to get off. Right. It's just it's, kind of a common thing that happens. Yeah. Yeah. This is why annual service is important. Exactly. So the pads come out. Um, I usually just collapse it just a little bit so I get my wire brush in here. Wow. Some of the brake dust. Right. Ooh, brake clean. That's pretty much it for the caliper. Okay. For the pads and the pins, I take that for the wire brush. Hey, look at all this cool Milwaukee stuff. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Huh. <laughs> Yep. Ah. So I said about the rust, there's rust on that. So, not a lot, but starting. Yeah, I see it. What I do is use a, uh, it's like a ceramic grease. Mm -hmm. And everybody gets, freaks out when you're like, oh, I gotta lube your pads. No, no, you don't do that. No, you're not lubing the, the braking material. 
you're lubing the points that slide. Yeah, who out. says to lube the braking material? Someone says that? Well, that, that's just it. There's a lot of comments online like, there's no such thing as lubing a brake pad. Well, you don't lube the actual, actual contact, contact surface. surface. Yeah, right. Lose your brakes doing that. This is just the, the contact points. And believe it or not. Is it worth it to, to lube the back? Uh, I do. I, I have lubed the back it, in the 50, past. 50 some people do, some people don't. Okay. This, if you look, because Brembo, the, Brembo makes these pet brakes. See this this material right here? Yep. It's actually a uh, like an anti squeak squeal pad. Mm -hmm. So you really don't need it. If you had a metal pad, yeah. Yeah, I would do, I'd throw it on that. They even make a anti squeal uh, material you put on it, which simulates this. But this is nice because this is just material on the pad. It doesn't slide off, doesn't come off. Okay. So with that, I don't, I don't bother. Okay. I'll slide in real nice like butter. Oh, just like butter, baby. I just throw a little bit on the pin. Slide it right in the hole. Get the clip in. It's like a big erector set. You know? mm -hmm. Push this pin here, slap that clip there. No problem. And these do have to be pounded back in a little bit. Here's a retaining lock on them. I'll keep my finger down so you can see it. Yeah, got it. Cool. Pop them back in. Look at Chad, such precision. Cool. That's it. It's in. And we just do this to all four. Because the rear caliper on the Model 3 and now a lot of the new S's and X's, they do a single caliper. So notice there's no parking brake caliper. Anymore. Ah, it's fully integrated into one now. Yeah, so it's fully integrated into one. So this is your regular brake, and this is also your parking brake caliper. Uh huh. So it's an electric motor. So right now, this is actually in park, and it's clamped on, so you can't take this off to, to clean or move the pads. So what you have to do is put this in tow mode. So once you put it in tow mode, that actually leaves, leaves the uh, caliper with the tension on it. That's more free. And we okay. Take it off. Okay. All right, turn it on. He's, he's got his, his fart app ready. So you want to go under service? service? Turn it down. So in order to get it in there so it's not highlighted, you can yep. actually push the brake pedal to that lights. Yep. And you hit it. Transport mode. You hit ah. the contact your cycle. Wait a minute. Parking brakes release. And now it's, it's free. I like those pedals. Where are those pedals from? Are those pedals from uh, EV tuning, Chris? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay, okay. good. So what we're going to do is sometimes the parking brake times out. So as you're working on it, so you're going to do is undo the electrical clip on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's easier than trying to push the tab. In. Right. I'm going to do that on the other side too, just in case. Oh, in case one side tries to do it. Yeah. Then it'll do parking brake fault. Yeah. It'll do a parking brake fault, but it'll it'll clear out once it sees that that parking brakes work fine. Gotcha. There you go. Cool. That way it doesn't reapply while we're working on it or something like that. And I know that they do time off if I'm sitting too long. Now these are a little different from the, the front. These are actually floating calipers. So the caliper actually moves and the bracket and the pads actually stay put. Okay. So what we're doing is we're actually moving the caliper itself from the bracket. There's your caliper. Okay. Nice. So it's pretty much like a standard caliper with a, an electric motor. Electric parking brake attached yep. to it, yeah. And it's just like a lot of uh, a lot of imports in other cars now. That screw type? The screw type, you gotta screw it in. Okay. So since we're only cleaning the pads and putting them back in, we don't have to uh, mess with this. We don't have to screw it in or do anything like that. It'll just go back on. Okay. I'll just rest it up there. And then these pads actually have retaining clips. See these metal retaining clips? Yeah. These are actually noise clips. This this one's actually got them broken. So this is what it's supposed to have. There's a little spring right here. Yep. And it's supposed to be on both sides. So what it does is it keeps the pad away from the rotor. But that'll, uh, that'll cause a lot of squ brake squeaking and stuff too if those aren't replaced. Noted. Uh, on the bottom pad, it's not so bad. The top, like, so if the top spring still works, it's still pulling it away. Whereas the top one, the pad will fall in like that, and it'll just rest on the rotor and it'll ah. squeak all the time. So these are just little nubbin ears on the side. It's not like the whole side of the pad. So we're just going to clean this and lube inside the track. I was like bench grinder. Those things are stupid. Oh, wait, no, they're not. <laughs> A lot of times people say, well, how competitive do you have to do this to? Mm -hmm. And my, you know, my Honda or my Toyota doesn't do that. Right. Well, in those cars, you use your brakes. You use your brakes all the time. Right. 
and the Tesla, uh, you're not really using your brakes as much. Nope. Uh, you hardly ever use it ever if you get comfortable with one of these cars. Right. Regenerative braking does everything, so it doesn't break through the electric motor. If you left your throttle just enough, it'll, it'll slow down. If you snap it up, you can almost come to a stop with it. Right. So, so you, the brakes are used very, like, minor, minor on this car. Right. Right. But that's the thing. Elon said that the brakes don't need service because you don't use them. But on the contrary, it seems like you have to still maintain them. Correct. There's a difference between, you know, servicing them as where you need to replace them versus uh, just maintaining them to prevent them from rusting up. Now, like I said... It's a big thing up here in like when New England where you get snow and salt and stuff like that. Right. Whereas like California, California where everything's perfect. Texas or right. something like that where it's a little kind of dry or Arizona. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about salt and rain and everything right. to rest them up. So yeah, they don't last a lot longer there. Put the back, back in the clips, like so. Cool. It's gonna go back on. The other thing to do is these these are what your, your caliper slides on. Mm-hmm. So always you know, make sure these move and they're not stuck because these can also stick. That one's a little stiff, but not screwed up. Yeah, cool. And these are snug. They're snug on a bug on a rug. Mm. Do you have a tool to tighten it if need be? Yes. Screw it back in. Yep. Cool. Voila. Nice. I'm gonna plug it in on this side because we're done with this side, so. Good stuff. That was easy. That's it. Ta-da. We're going to do tire pressures. Should be around 42. Well, that's a little bit much. Go around, check them all, and then uh, torque these wheels, and then we'll go on to the alignment. Was that always there, the air overhead? You added that. I added that. Huh. That, so what are we doing now? So usually what I do is I go through, I'll, I'll check the sway bar for play, yeah. uh, check your ball joints, the, the tie rod ends, um, same thing on the other side. Uh, belly pans, like I said, there's a lot of times there's loose hardware and you found some. This one right here. Yeah. This bolt right here. Kind of so halfway this in. Going, so this going down the road, you know, the wind's going to buffer. Gotcha. Yeah. Good annoying. So same thing, you know, make sure there's no scrapes damage to the battery. Um, rear belly pan, same thing, go around and check because there's a lot of hardware in this one. Um, we got another center bolt, same thing. That one's like not in all the way, so I'll rattle. And then on top of that, uh, we got a bolt here. But yep. it, MIA, where'd that one go? Yeah, well, guys, don't worry about that little guy, right? Just sometimes these will come out too in the back, the back bumper. This will rattle around. Um, this one's going to rattle because that bolt's missing. Huh. I'll pull this belly pan down because this is the pan that usually uh, collects everything because of the way it's designed. So they have these openings for the suspension here, but at the same time, it's, it allows it's, rocks, it allows rocks and all sorts of stuff to come up in here. And then they have these little, little valleys here that just hold everything. There's no way for it to get out unless you take it off. Gotcha. These are notorious for ripping down in the winter. If you have a Model 3, you saw something hanging down from your underside of your car when you hit some snow, this is it. This is not plastic. It's actually like a fiber. Mm-hmm. So it, oh, for sound deadening. Sound also. deadening, yeah. Gotcha. And it uh, it does tear if you catch snow on it. You're sitting at right height. This is sitting up higher. All the suspension is above this hole. So this is just a big open hole that likes to catch stuff. That's a lot better. That's better. We had a Model 3 the other day that was missing these. Oh, really? So this inner inside piece was actually just flopping around. Point. It's pretty clean. It's pretty clean. Yeah. You know, we do have some odds and ends and debris down there. Oh, look at that. That wasn't even installed right. Loops. That's always pleasant. So the bolt was actually in front of that. So that that right there is a rattle too. Okay. See? It's a good thing you took it down. I'll just take it outside. outside and shake it. Okay. So here's the back, back rear drive unit. Uh, you get your sway bar. Check to make sure everything is nice and tight in that. Your links. Car right here. So I've seen a couple of these cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are uh, supporting plates for the subframe. Yep. So that one's your your subframe main bolt, and there's two smaller bolts here for the the, the plate. Okay. These also hold the battery back half the battery in. Uh, we had one the other day that was in here for a rattle. This bolt was hanging out three quarters of the way. Right about it was right about here, and I did this, and it fell out. Really. And then the other bolt back here wasn't even there. It was missing. <laughs> so uh, that could have been a problem. Yeah, it could have been a problem. He's complaining about a clicking noise. 
So I, I tightened it up, put a new bolt in it, and then I retorqued all the other bolts because they were loose. Okay. It's a good thing to, to check that type of stuff. I mean, everybody says, oh, it's a new car. Shouldn't be anything wrong with it. Uh, always check. You know, worst case is you just waste a little bit of time. I'd rather waste time than the life. So I always check the springs, make sure they're seated right. They're not, not coming out of the, their buckets. Make sure the control arms are in there tight. For toe adjustment, that's the adjuster. Okay. So with the belly pan in here, you'd never be able to really get at that. So it's easier to just take the pan off and, and then we can just do a tow real quick. So the next is to uh, fire up the line machine, break up the stands. I set this up a little different. Mm -hmm. The Chem sets it up as a huge stand with uh, the laptop on it and a, and a little bit of a bigger monitor. Right. Uh, due to space, I broke it down and mounted it to the wall. This is a lot cooler, yeah, for sure. I have a lot less space. Yeah, and it's, it's a real simple system. So it's not like a lot of complicated, you know, individual components. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you get the heads, uh, the charging cables for the heads, because the heads are wireless. Yep. And the laptop is the main the main unit. I mean, everything's attached to the back of it. You know, this is permissive range, and I threw the TV on because it makes it a lot easier to see it from a distance. Right. Uh, when doing the adjustments, especially if you're in the car doing the caster sweep. So we're going to use a set this up. And square. Cool. And then we're going to do to remount the heads to the wheels, yep. and then we're going to do a uh, compensation. So you should actually rotate the wheel with the head on it, and it sees how offset the head is, and it does the math uh, for the uh, actual alignment. So these are pretty much designed to kind of, like, a more of a sa space-saving format, right? Yeah. Because the heads just mount right into the walls, they go onto the wheels, and you don't need that giant T that you're used to seeing when you go to a typical alignment right. place. So these these have the sensors built into them. Yep. They're not, uh, so like a lot of the ones with the T's have a target. Yep. So there's no actual head per se, it's just a target that goes on each wheel. Yep. And then the cross does uh, the, the actual camera work. Whereas these, it's built into it, so mm -hmm. it has two cameras, it has one in the back and one that goes across. So I can show you and take it off here. So this actually sits like this on the wheel, and then there's one here that points to the other wheel. Okay. So that goes across, and this one goes front to back. And these are just a quick clamp-on style, so you just put them on the edge of the rim. Yep. Like that, and it's just a, a knob adjustment. You open it up, get it on the rim. Make sure these little pads are sitting down all the way. Two green check marks. Two, two green check marks. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Three green check marks. Oh, oh, oh. It's on the wheel. So Thinking, yay. All right, now this is the cool part. Now we're, we're gonna use our technology so to our advantage. The screen is mainly for doing front and, and the steering. You don't really need it. Come plug it from the wall. Yeah, it's all wireless. I can just take this out back with me, and I can see what's going on cool. as I'm adjusting it. Oh my god! Hey, it's a cool Milwaukee light we're using. Yeah. So let me use my ratchet wrench on this one. This is. Oh, a little bit. Move too far. So get in here. So if you watch the screen, how mm -hmm. touchy this is. Wait, overshot a little bit right there. Awesome. It's really sensitive. So take your time with it. And there you go. Cool. So that's 10 on the right. Now yep. we gotta get 10 on the left because zero is not what spec is. Okay. Put this bad boy back up and replace all the screws that were missing. Like can hold it. Thank you, mysterious hand. Huh? At least I could do. <laughs> Installing those too. All right, so what we're going to do is you want to disconnect your negative first, and the car will still be on until you shut down the, the DC to DC. And we'll need the back seat. Pull the seat up, pull the foam block out. And that's your connector for the BMS and everything else. You want to disconnect it like this. And what it does is it opens the contacts and shuts everything down, mm -hmm. which stops the 12 volt from having yeah, power. And also here, I noticed that there's different clips now. So the Model 3 is supposed to the ass. You yep. have to pull for your life to get those things Exactly. Up. So on the Model 3, these connector, these seat clips actually have a hinge. Ah, okay. So cool. that just releases. So you have to, have to slide sideways in both of them to release right. the seat. You have to do that side as well? Yes. Okay. Yep. Take the screws out of this, pull this out. You can take your clips off, which is, Chris has already done. We're going to pull the battery out. Don't forget to pull your drain, your, your vent tube. Mm -hmm. um, 
since we're doing a conversion, this tube is not going to be used on the new one. So we're going with a lithium battery, a lot lighter, a lot more power behind it. Slides into the, these two hooks. Let's hold that down so now the battery's secure. Yep. Hope you pause it first. Okay, pause is not connected. Now you're going to do it a little backwards. You're actually going to hook up the battery in the trunk before you put this back on. Okay. And there's no vent tube on this battery? There's no vent tube. So the reason why we're doing this is because now, when you plug this back in, there's no 12 volt to feed the, the logic in here so the contactors will stay open. Mm -hmm. So everything's still shut off and everything's connected now. So the moment we connect that 12 volt, we won't get any alerts. So now when we want to connect this, it's going to power that up and it's going to close the contactors and power up the car. Yep. And you just turn the contact. Nice. Thank you, Chad. Not a problem. Nice. Ta-da. So there's actually two air filters stacked one on top of another. Okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a small Torx screw that has to be removed at the top of the cover. Yep. It's a small T20. Cool. All right. And that's holding in that cover. The red cables for the PTC heater are attached mm -hmm. to that cover on those studs. Mm -hmm. There she is. Kill one. First one. Okay. So what's the difference between the new and the old ones? And like, why are you changing them in the first place? Are they bad? These bad? These good? Yeah, so the car's got about 19,000 miles on it. Once a year is a good time to change these. A lot of people, they complain about a funny smell in the air conditioning when they turn it on. Yep. This is the reason why. You basically have tree, debris, everything that comes out of the exhaust pipe of another car, mm -hmm. all is inside of here. Yep. And with moisture, it starts to grow mold and bacteria. Yep. So once a year, it's a good, a good idea to change them out. The new ones have an upgraded HEPA filter. Mm -hmm. And they're also charcoal. Oh, this is a lot nicer. Model 3 doesn't get to have biohazard mode the way Model S and Model X do. Right. So this is kind of like a good upgrade. Okay. Not quite the equivalent, but it's it's much better filtration. Interesting how it has two. Old BMWs, like that BMW at EV West, mm -hmm. that's the way that these are done. They're a lot harder to get out of on that car. You went to a dealership, you'd find a lot of them sitting next to a technician's desk, even though he supposedly changed the name. <laughs> Is that personal experience, Chris? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can say there was a lot when Chad and I used to work at the dealership together. And that's just the reverse of removal. So this cover goes back on. Yep. That screw goes back in place like that. Yep. And then there are some loops on the cable there. On the screw. They go on to these studs. Long studs, okay. To hold it in place. And then it's just a matter of snapping on the cover again. Okay. And that's it. Cool. Wipers. So that's what's next. So we gotta do is put this, there's actually a service mode for the wipers, so you're not struggling to get them over the hood like that. Mm -hmm. So very similar to like tow mode, uh, you go into service, uh, wiper service mode. You wanna yep. put that on. And what that does is raise them up. Pop them up, yeah. Similar yeah. to my ass. The cool thing is when you put it in service mode, it knows it's in service mode. Mm -hmm. And your connection moves. Oh, adorable. So, yeah, so that's how light and easy that is. Yeah. It's in service mode, it knows don't do anything. Right. Um, these have the, the Model 3 is different from the S and the X. So, this piece right here is actually the washer jet. There's a nozzle here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know there's another nozzle right under here. So, there's okay. two nozzles on per blade. Okay. So, those uh, might need adjusting. Um, but these, it's really easy. You just push the button in. 
and that just pops out. Simple. Simple. Cool. Don't put the wiper directly in the corner. No. So two knife blades. These are a piece of cake to replace, huh? These easiest yeah. ways I've ever seen. Yeah. Done. Two. Cool. That's one blade. Comes out. There it goes. Awesome. You gotta line it up. Cool. That's it. And then you take it out of service mode and they'll go right back to where when you're not locked out of the car. Yep. Yeah. Helps. That auto locking get in trouble. See now in service mode it's still up high. And then off and then nice. go right where Cool, man. And that's it. This guy's ready to rock. Ready to go. Well, awesome, Chad. Thank you very much for showing me how to do all this cool stuff, man. I appreciate right. that. Good stuff, dude. Clear up my mess. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Shout out to Chem for making our awesome wheel and tire equipment. Now, in the next episode of the Electrified Garage, we're going to do a comprehensive dive on the Model X with problem areas to look out for on used and even new purchases. Check out the Electrified Garage on Facebook or on Instagram, and I will see you guys soon.